Hello plant lovers, it is Matthew in Melbourne welcoming you back to my channel. Thank you very much for finding me. If you're new here, I grow cold, cool, intermediate orchids here in Melbourne, Australia without a greenhouse or grow lights or humidifiers, just my raw skill. And these plants are either indoors or outdoors or they're not at all. So plant lovers, if that sounds like your kind of setup, do hit subscribe, I post every week. And this week, an experiment. Now, I decided that my life was not complete without this orchid, which is, and I will show you the label, Gastrochilus bellinus. There we are. Look at that cute little thing. Now, if you Google these plants, you'll see that it's a bit Neophonetia-like. It's a little bit like a miniature Vanda-like. Monopodial epiphyte with the most beautiful little flowers. More Vanda-like than anything, I think. And I just decided I couldn't live without it. Now, this particular one is a species and it's found in that magical spot to the border of southern China, Myanmar, Laos, Thailand, just around there where all manner of wonderful orchids grow. And it is an epiphyte and it literally just clings to the side of trees, branches, etc. So not really in anything. So often epiphytes can sort of subsist on a little mound of other detritus of leaf mold and etc. But no, this is a clinger. Problem is, of course, that it is, it is described as cool to warm, but I'm going to take a punt and say this is not going to love Melbourne's winters outdoors. So this has got to be an indoor plant all year for me, which means I can't mount it because I can't have mounted things indoors because I can't water them blah, 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 you feel my pain. So it means I have got to be experimental, cunning and creative with my potting. And that plant lovers brings us quite neatly to our topic of the day. How does Matthew pot his Gastrochilus bellinus? Well, before we get into that, let's just say, oh, but here's another plant. Now, I was so lucky to be sent this other Gastrochila species, which is Rutilans, by the nursery that I bought it from, which is Dark Star Orchids here in Australia. I'll put the link below. They are a specialist in species orchids. Anyway, very, very, very kind of them. So thank you very much for this. This one has more of a yellow flower. This one, Google it. It's like a, an amazing, I don't know, I want to call it leopard print, but it's not because it's reds and whites, but it, it's got that sort of amazing spotty texture that you find on some incredibly exotic looking orchids. Anyway, so thrilled to have two. So they are both going to get special potting treatment. All right, you know I love a little gardening Latin. So gastrochilus sounds like it has got a little touch of food poisoning. Funny you should think that because gastro, well, actually, gasta means belly in Greek. And the chylus comes from chelios, which means lip. So you've got belly lip. Guess what? Apparently, the lip of the flower looks like a belly, I suppose. Now, bellinus, that's interesting. So there was an ancient king of England way, 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 way back in about the second century called bellinus. And apparently the Latin for that means bright one. And Rutilans as a prefix in Latin, so in plants, tends to mean, well, it does mean a reddish tinge. Now, plant lovers, if you were to Google this one, you think, hmm, more yellow orange, more red. But anyway, who am I to argue with the great gods of botanic taxonomy? And Rutilans comes from a similar part of the world as its cousin here, but perhaps not quite as widespread. All right, so. Both of these are classic epiphytes clinging to the sides or to a branch or a, a trunk clinging to the bark. So not dissimilar to Phalaenopsis or Vandas, for example, or Neophonetia. And as I said, I can't mount them in that way here because I need to keep these indoors all year. So what should happen? But I was scrolling through Instagram, as you do, and I follow quite a few Japanese and Korean orchid growers who also grow Tilsandias. And one of the things that always strikes me about growers from that part of the world is the immaculate potting and presentation of the orchids that you see from Japanese and Korean growers, often in these elongated, almost vase shaped pots with those plastic inserts and kind of a, an open bottom as it were. So you see you've got that which is that and that which then just sits in there. 
So it's a particular, I'll call it art, technique of potting, which is not kokodama, which is the Japanese technique of just uh, potting something in a ball of moss, just, just the ball which is bound. This is not the same. I don't know what you would call it, but I'm just going to call it a Japanese slash Korean technique for potting orchids. And in fact, there's a great garden botanic channel called Botany Boy, not from Sydney, Botany Bay, but it's an American chap who lives in Japan and he posts about all manner of different plants, not just orchids. But he has a collection of Neophinitia orchids and he pots them in this manner and he has done some really great how-to tutorials. So this is nothing new under the sun. I am quite simply going to experiment for myself because these orchids really don't thrive in pots. So they need to be kind of, you know, mounted really, but I'm going to mount them on a mound of sphagnum moss with some very large bark inside. And you plant lovers are going to come on the journey with me. Now I'll put the link to Botany Boy below and you can have a look at his channel um, full of beautiful things in Japan and he has a lot of content about Neo Phoenicias because that is his thing. Anyway, first cab off the rank is where did I get these from? Just so happens I literally just found the two of them randomly on eBay. And unusual terracotta pots, these terracotta you know, I live for, hard to find here in Australia. Anyway, so I can't give you a link to a shop because it was just a one-off sale from a, an individual person. But I wonder maybe if you were to scroll through Etsy, you might find something similar, or perhaps even some uh, Japanese sites sell and ship internationally, don't know. Anyway, never seen them since. I feel very lucky to have them. And so these are precious and wonderful plants and I'm gonna have a go at mounting them in this Japanese Korean manner. Let's see how I go. So the first thing you're going to need is your pot. Now you could use any sort of terracotta pot, I guess, with some kind of um, plastic basket underneath because what these plants need, like Neophonitias and like Vandas, etc, etc, is lots of air around the roots, which is why these pots are designed in this particular way. So that's what we have to achieve, light airiness. So you could use a regular terracotta pot with a plastic basket insert upside down, elevate your orchid and go from there, perhaps. The other thing we're going to need is sphagnum moss. And in fact, what we're going to need is sphagnum moss that has been moistened. And here is me soaking this moss. So quite simply, I used room temperature water, I have to confess, because it's really cold here in Melbourne. <laughs> anyway, so slightly warm water. Thrust your moss in and then let it swish about for a bit, absorb that moisture, you'll feel it's quite soft to the touch and then give it a good squeeze and let it drain. And Bob is your uncle, as they say. And here is my moist moss waiting for action. The next thing you're going to need is a really great bottle of Pinot. You can use any bottle. You can use a plastic drink container, a milk bottle, anything. You just kind of need that shape because we're going to form our ball of moss over the top of this and then transfer it into those pots thus. Now, there are a million videos on YouTube about how to do this, how to make those mossy balls. So you might not want to trust me. You might want to go and find the expert. But as I said, I've linked Botany Boy below and he does it constantly. You can have a look at how he is managing his orchids and his bottle mounting of the mossy lump. The next thing I'm going to use, or the last thing, is actually some large bark because what I want is to create that airy platform and I don't want the moss to be too dense. So I'm actually going to put bark there first, then the moss, just to give it again more aeration, but also something for those roots to cling to. Hmm. We'll see how it goes. This might be a complete and abject failure. We might see in a year's time, they're both dead, but let us cross our fingers and assume the best. And I will now swing the camera around and we'll have a look at my potting attempt. Okay, first thing to do is to obviously unpot them. So I need to keep those labels in the right place. Let's just see. Ah, there we go. That was easy. One root for that baby. Hmm. And a little bit of dead root work, which I am going to trim off. Hmm. So what these roots do not like is being contained and I just feel perhaps that that was just too moist. Hmm. 
That's a shame. Oh well. We have still got... Mm, that one looks a bit dead. Yes it is. Oh god. Okay, one viable root. Hmm. And a bit of another one. Okay. Now let's look at number two. Hopefully that's in slightly better condition. Yes, look at that. Excellent. Although, no. <gasps> look at that. Mm, I have to say that moss smells a little bit too. It's a little bit stale. Hmm. Anyway, looks like we've got better roots. That's still viable, but the end's dead. And there we have a dead one. Right, let me trim that off. Maybe we'll take the end of that one off. Okay. There we are. There are our plants. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is just pad that out a little bit with our large bark, like thus. There we are. Get our fabulous bottle of Pinot and get a handful of our damp moss and squeeze it around the top, like that, to form us tight a ball as we can which should hopefully just transfer now the other thing we're going to need is some fairly long bits of moss it's probably a better idea to sort these out beforehand okay so then we place our orchid on the top and we literally bind it into place with some of these longer bits of moss and I'm gonna go around here tuck that in and around here etc etc so there we go binding binding so you're just kind of crisscrossing like a blanket stitch I guess I'll keep doing that and then come back okay now I am taking my mossy ball off the bottle and I am putting it into my pot like that. There we are. Now I'm going to strap that root down. So there is our first attempt. <laughs> and here is attempt number two. Let's get our plant, place it on the top like so. And then using some of our longer bits, let's just bind some of these roots into place crosswise. Thread that through there. Okay, right. Now we gently transfer our whole ball to our pot. Plonk ever so gently our mossy mound in there tucking in a lot of those woven ends into the pot like that. Look at that. Not forgetting the right tag. Hmm, there we are plant lovers. Well, <laughs> I'm not unproud of my first attempts. Um, my fear is that uh, particularly this one Rutilans didn't have much of a root unfortunately. The thing with these orchids is that they do not like their roots to be enclosed and to be damp. They like to be moist and misty, dry and repeat. If you imagine where they are they're getting constant moisture running past them and then evaporating and drying and etc etc etc. So I've got to try and replicate that. So moss can obviously retain quite a bit of moisture which is why you have that sort of air vent underneath with the upturned basket and this is why I put in some large bark as well. Now I could have used large pumice stones as well which could have given it more aeration. Um, anyway we'll see how we go. We'll see if they survive. That's the most important thing. So Rutilans likes a little bit more shade than Bellinus which likes a bit more sun, a bit more bright light. So I'm going to keep these indoors all year. I am going to miss them every morning and I'm going to give them relatively frequent waterings with a liquid fertilizer and a liquid tonic alternating. So the tonic can be seaweed based or worm juice, whatever it might be. And the liquid fertilizer will be a liquid, it can be a liquid general fertilizer or a liquid specific 
orchid fertilizer diluted down to sort of one one quarter one sixth of the recommended dose always because again these plants aren't going to have their roots in a medium to be drawing up nutrients so a little bit like the vanda that i'm experimenting with growing in a pot which is actually doing quite well um I just have to feed it quite often because it's not getting its its food from any other source. If I was in a more tropical, balmy environment, of course, I could mist it with a diluted fertilizer on its mount, but it doesn't have one. So we are making do, but that has survived two years and is actually growing quite well. It was something that I made a film about experimenting a while back. And as it progresses, I will come back and visit it. But anyway, I digress. Here we go. There we are. I love these pots. I really hope both of these orchids find the will within them to make these pots work for themselves. I know they would be better mounted on wood, but I just can't do it in this house, which is unfortunate. Anyway, we'll see. Hopefully they both make it through. And should they, and should they actually get to a blooming size, I will, of course, follow up. Let me know if you have found any pots like this and if you're potting things in a similar way, I'd be very keen to find out your stories. Anyway, I'm not displeased with what I've done. Let's see how we go. But plant lovers, thank you very much for finding me. I do post every week of such amateurish stumblings through the world of growing orchids here in Melbourne without a greenhouse, which in this case might be a bit of a problem. Anyway, I'm not changing. So if you want to find out what I'm doing next week, do hit subscribe. As I said, post every week and I am looking forward to seeing you next week. I hope all is well in your world. Take care and I'll see you on Friday.